Um, you've got this thing on your back, so just for orientation for everybody that's watching, uh, these this would be the shoulder blades in the back, right? This is the back of the head, and so kind of between the shoulder blades, but below the neck here, you've got, uh, well, you can see for yourself, you've got a large cyst, right? Yeah. And uh, kind of tell us the story a little on this. Well, it's been a pretty good sized bump under my skin with no coloration for a few years. Yeah. No, no discomfort, um, no leakage or anything. And uh, up until a couple of weeks ago, it started turning red, uh, feeling pressure, uh, warm to the touch, and um, with uh, without any um, uh, help, it just kind of started to leak, and then it just mm -hmm. kind of progress from there. And uh, you took a trip? Yes, we were over in Israel, in the mm -hmm. Holy Land. Now, how, how long have you been back from that trip? A week. A week. Yeah. And um, Mrs. Speedy did some, some work on this for you, right? Yes, okay. yes, she was extracting some. She squeezed a little out, and yeah. then uh, you started doing some warm compresses mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, okay. Yes. Has it been hurting a lot? No, just to the touch. Just to um, the touch, okay. If I laid flat on it, yeah, putting pressure on it, it would, it would be sensitive, but it's bearable. Okay, so everybody can see what you have here is an epidermoid cyst, and it, and it, you know, it's rather large. Um, you know, th that's about uh, two and a half to three inches by two inches. Uh, clearly fluctuant. It's open here. It's freely draining. It's inflamed. The question is whether it's infected or not. I tend to, to lean toward probably not infected, uh, but definitely inflamed. The, the fluid leaking out of here is um, a lot of protonaceous material. You've actually got some um, uh, broken down fat material in here and um, you know keratin protonaceous. So um, we're gonna numb this up a little bit and see if we can't empty this for you, okay? okay. We like to, you know, when we know there's a cyst, we, we like to try to remove the sac and all of that, but you know, this is one of these things that happens at the primary care level. People people come in like this and, you know, doctors often say, well, I don't even know what to do. Where do you start with this, right? Because this really, it's really almost uh, overwhelming to think about uh, the whole process. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide some local anesthesia. We're going to numb this up. We're going to empty it out. I'm going to use a curette. We're going to try to scrape as much as we can and see if we can get as much sac material out of there as possible. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we'd be able to, you know, clear this all out at the same time as um, removing the sac is probably not gonna happen. Okay. But what we can do is we can certainly improve the condition quite a bit, get rid of the pain, get rid of all of this extra material, um, and we can allow some healing to occur. And then down the road, we can plan a time where we come back and maybe we can you know, remove the sac at that point, okay? okay? But right now, we want we don't want to get into the skin any more than we absolutely have to, okay? okay. Because the, the risk of infection is too high. Right. So Gumby Jean's gonna spray a little cold spray and I'm gonna numb this up with a little lidocaine with epinephrine. You're gonna feel a little stick sting and a burn. And my objective now is to, to not um, inject fluid to the point where this erupts uh, all over the place. Gumby Jean, you froze my needle. Sorry. That's okay. It's working now. So the medicine's going in slowly. That sting much? A little bit? A little bit. A little bit. So we're gonna do uh, another needle after this one, okay? Okay. All right, so we're gonna go shallow first and then we'll go deeper. So uh, we know that there's an underside to this, right? There's a bottom. Right. And underneath that is gonna be some, you know, myofascial kind of material, muscular uh, tissue along with uh, some um, connective tissue, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we start scraping down there, that's gonna hurt if we don't get an anesthetic in you. All right, now we're gonna go a little bit deeper. That just really looks painful, doesn't it, Gummy mm -hmm. Jean? Hope it's not hurting as much now, Speedy. <laughs> well, it's been angry. Speedy told me he's not quite as speedy as he used to be. <laughs> with, with age, we slow a little bit. Now we're gonna try to go underneath, and this might sting, in fact it will. This should hurt. I get down, I want to get below. I don't want to get into the cyst. There we go. And in this direction. Now, if at any point while we're doing anything, if you start to hurt, you just tell me, okay? Okay. I'll use a little bit more medicine. You said you had watched some of our videos, so you know we don't like people to hurt, right? Yes, right. Okay. So in the future, don't wait till it looks like this to come right. in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
that's a lot easier. You feeling it? Mm -mm. I'm anticipating it, but I'm not. You're not feeling any pain? That's good. That's what I want. I don't want you to hurt. Don't that enough. All right. Thank you, Gummy Jean. So we can see where this has already got a good size. That's, a, that's about a dime-sized opening that, mm. that already exists. So... Now I'm, I'm basically just going to uh, start by just expressing what you have here. I'm going to get a, a feel for kind of how deep this goes. You can see there's, there's quite a bit in there, Gumby Jean, so keep your distance. Okay. In doing that, have you ever had the sack come out? All the time. Mm -hmm. We did the other day, right, Gumby Jean? Mm -hmm. That's the best case scenario. Well, that would be awesome, right? Where the sack just sort of pops out too and it all just comes out. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you gonna, or no? Yeah, let's do a little culture. Does that hurt at all? Mm -mm. Let's see if we can't get a culture. Yeah, and I'm not convinced that you have an infection, but better safe than sorry, right? Right. See, I feel around the edges there, you've got, definitely have more in there. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, let's get a scalpel. Okay. Well, it looks a lot better already, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open this up just a little bit more right here. Skin is very thick right there. Mm -hmm. And then right there. So if you're, you know, for, for students and so forth that are, that are, um, find themselves in this situation, you, you want to do your best to empty the sack or empty the cyst as much as possible. You want to make the patient comfortable. You want to get them on some antibiotics. And you want to do your best to clean it out as much as possible. Get as much of the, the oily, proteinaceous material out of this that you possibly can. If you're able to, get a curette and get in there and start scraping. You hear that scraping noise? Mm -hmm. Did yeah, you feel a little pain? That. Okay, yeah, let's get a little more anesthesia on board. Now that we've got a lot of the material out of the way, we still see some more in there, but we can we can do a little better job of uh, using the anesthetic here. Um, probably a longer needle, huh? Yep. Well, you don't really need a longer needle. Um, we can we have better access to. And this is all very thick in skin around here. We call that peau de orange. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's just basically inflamed skin that'll return to normal over time. You need more than this? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we're gonna get a little bit more medicine for you. Oh good, you brought it in here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so a little more anesthesia now. Here we go. <clears throat> but just so everybody can get an idea how deep this really goes and how big it is, you can actually get way up in there. So. Wow. Okay, that goes way under there. That's how deep this is channeled. So the idea that you would just suture this up somehow and he'd be fine is absolutely inappropriate because you've got this, this space in there, we call that a dead space, where, where you just have material and blood and it's gonna all just kind of congeal in there. And what'll end up happening is, is it'll get infected, even if it's not infected now, which we think it, it may not be, but. So we just keep kind of working here from the edges, make sure that any oily material we can get out, we're gonna get out now. Surprised you how deep that was, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. You okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. 
just trying to relax so mm -hmm. I don't know what makes it easier for you. No, you're fine. You're in a good position right there. Joey Jean, we're going to have to pack this the best that we can. I used to come here all the time. We're going to need a lot of packing material. So you got little pieces of uh, what could be sacked that I'm seeing in here. So I'm just kind of poking or pulling these out a little bit at a time. Okay. Okay. Nice and easy. You know what would be good, Gumby Jeans, if I got one of those large uh, cotton tip applicators? A large one? Well, or a or couple these? of those that you have over there are fine. Okay. You'd be amazed at how deep this goes. Really? Yeah. yeah. I like to use a little dilute peroxide to flush so that it helps yeah. bubble out anything warm. that's anything that's done. Oh, it felt warm? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Let's pack it. What are you doing tomorrow? Me? Yes, sir. We're celebrating the first Astros win. Okay. <laughs> well, you, can come, you can come in and celebrate with us because we're going to have to remove this and replace it tomorrow. Okay. Game's at 708, right? Oh, I Isn't that know. weird? Seven oh eight. Oh no! <laughs> well, they do that on purpose. All right, you're you're more likely to remember seven oh eight than yeah, seven o'clock. Yeah. They have a team of psychologists that help them decide when to start games. <laughs> <laughs> so we're packing this open so that uh, the the you know it won't form. Uh, collections of fluid in here, okay? So it won't okay. loculate, all right? So. Okay, that should do it. Let me feel here. Yeah, good. Gummy Jean, you're gonna dress this yes. for us? Yeah, we had a little leftover. I'm sure you discard that for me. All right, so uh, when you shower, um, you're gonna have a, a little plastic dressing over this tonight, okay? Okay. So just try to leave it alone. It's gonna this is gonna bleed. This is gonna ooze. Expect that. Okay. okay? If it if if the dressing fills up and you've got to replace it, that's perfectly okay. Just leave this tape in here. Okay. All right? Don't yeah. don't pull that tape out. But 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 try to keep it as dry as possible. Try to keep it dry if you can. Okay. You can still shower, just don't scrub on the, the dressing or anything. All right. You wanna take it from there? Yes. All right. Oops, stay real still for me. Stay real still. Okay. There we go. Fall asleep. All right. So uh, I'm going to need you to come back tomorrow. We'll remove the packing and we'll repack that for you, okay? Okay. Speedy, we appreciate you letting us video this for our fans on, well, YouTube and Facebook and all over the place. Um, and uh, we will see you tomorrow for an update, okay? Very good. Thank you. All right, folks, this is Emily, and Emily's been using Coco Skin Plus. Emily, um, you want to give your personal testimonial? I started taking Coco Skin Plus about six months ago, and since then I've noticed a huge difference in my skin. It's softer, my hair is softer, and it's grown so long. Awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, I've definitely noticed a difference. It's definitely helped my hair feel better, my skin feel better, and you can pick it up on Amazon. All right, check out Coco Skin Plus on m7amazon.com available and it was designed by Dr. John Gilmore. Thanks. Tell us something. Hi, I'm Suzanne and I take Dr. G's Meta 7. This right here? I've been taking it since yeah. uh, about for one month actually. Okay. And? and I really enjoy it because uh, it activates my life just like it says. I have lots of energy. You do have more energy. And, yes. A lot and more you're energy. taking it as part of a weight loss program, right? Yes. Okay. And now we have lost some weight, but we're not going to attribute all of that to the Meta 7 because we use no. we use something else to help. But the good thing is, is while you're losing weight, you still have lots of energy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. And I like to swim. And so it's great because I can swim extra long because of the Meta 7. I, you know, I really, really enjoy it. Awesome. So, yes. Thanks. You're welcome.